Legends talk of a lost monastery, ghosts, a hidden tunnel and countless other secrets. Tucked away behind Victorian workers' cottages almost forgotten lies a minuscule haven for wildlife. Once almost lost to industry and then saved from modern development by a determined group of residents, and now a hidden gem of peace and tranquility for all. This is the story of the Hermitage Wildlife Garden. Come on in. Very few records remain from medieval times about this piece of land. But local legends tell of a small community of monks, possibly attached to Qua Abbey on the Isle of Wight, who looked after the nearby medicinal springs and well. The well was originally thought to be protected by a Saxon goddess. But with the arrival of Christianity, it was brought under the protection of Saint Anne. By the late 18th century, almost all signs of the former monastic settlement had long gone, and ordnance survey maps show the area as farmland. The land was then bought by an enterprising brickmaker called John Collins, who excavated part of the site for brick earth an essential part of the brick-making process. The remnants of the monastic settlement are believed to have been discovered at this time. John Collins built a number of buildings on the site, including a substantial house for himself and his family, and established an orchard and garden. From the late 19th century, the property changed hands several times and started to be split up and sold for housing. By the 1930s, only around a half of the garden remained. Although now surrounded by new housing estates, the garden was still maintained as a haven of peace for residents. It was around this time that excavations by the gas board unearthed what appeared to have been a tunnel, believed by some to have led to the church in Alverstoke, although this was never proved. Sadly, by 1980, the orchard had become badly overgrown, and the land was at risk of being sold off for yet more housing. In March 1990, the bulldozers moved in and started clearing the site. However, a spirited and determined campaign to save the garden and its wildlife was mounted by Pat Edwards and her mother, Olive. In a victory for people power, the residents managed to hold up the proposed development for long enough to get the trees legally protected. And in 1995, the gardens became a protected open space, which is owned by the council. The community group, the Friends of the Hermitage, was established and started clearing the site in November 1995. With the help of the countryside section of the council and HMS Sultan community service groups. Stunning new gates were designed by Richard Bent, a local artist blacksmith from Bracefield near Romsey. The gardens are open to the public and maintained by the Friends of the Hermitage and other local volunteers. The gardens consist of a winding path following a circular route through different areas of wild planting and trees, with a small pond and several quiet seated areas. Interpretation boards explain the wildlife to be discovered and identify the trees and plants. The garden provides sanctuary for local people, a place of peace and quiet which enables people to relive memories of the countryside and their childhood. The development of the garden centres around four main principles. 1. The growth of some native plant species, providing the start of the food chain which supports native animal life. The oak tree supports 284 insect species and the hawthorn 150. Two, allowing for decay. 
Hedgehogs and wood mice benefit from piles of old leaves left in the corners and under hedgerows. Some creatures choose to hibernate in the hollow stems of dead flowers. More creatures eat dead or rotting materials than living, so it's important to allow things to decay. Three, providing lots of breeding sites. Woodpiles provide homes for wood-boring beetles and wood wasps, as well as encouraging various fungi to colonize. Stag beetles rely on decaying wood as the larvae feeds on the wood at or just below ground level for about four years. They then pupate and emerge the following May or June as adults. Nest boxes increase the opportunity for blue tits, great tits, sparrows and robins to breed. The dense bramble undergrowth is also a great attraction for many birds including dunnock and blackbird. 4. Creating a variety of habitats A woodland edge of mature oaks already exists, and this has been supplemented by underplanting with species such as bluebells, primroses, foxgloves, wild garlic and cuckoo pint. The meadow provides an all-year-round food supply with colourful flowers such as marigolds, oxeye, daisies and nutweed. The pond and bog garden increase the opportunity for wildlife, water being essential for all life. A great variety of animals and plants exist and thrive in this small oasis. There is a hedgerow to provide berries for birds, leaves for caterpillars and other insects, as well as protection for nesting birds, and a herb garden containing traditional medicinal plants. The garden also contains some surprises and artefacts, including the beautiful chainsaw carvings by local artist Paul Civil. A delight for residents, visitors and the local wildlife. Every season at the Hermitage brings new arrivals and discoveries. If you'd like to find out more about the Hermitage Wildlife Garden and the Friends of group, please visit their website and social media pages. <laughs>